Hey guys, welcome back. It's Job Wise Jones. I hope you're enjoying the videos out there. Thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate you just not looking at the video, but also subscribing. Got an email today from Neely. Neely says, thank you for the help, Job Wise. I passed my NHA exam, and I want to thank you for your help. Well, there we go, you guys. That's what I'm doing here, right? That's what I do. I push it hard on you guys all the time with these videos because I want you to pass, okay? So that's the real deal. You know I hate small talk. Let's get right down to it. Diagnostics. This is the CCMA, NHA prep. Diagnostics. Are you ready? Nope. Too bad. Here we go. NA is the symbol for what? Nitrogen, iron, sodium, or potassium. What is NA? What's that symbol for? Nitrogen, iron, sodium, or potassium. What could that be, huh? Hmm. It is for sodium. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Working with your physician. Physician says, hey, I need to get a sterile urine specimen to the for a collection from a patient okay so you hear the word sterile urine collection right so what do you as the ma need to gather for this to happen right what do you have to gather for a sterile urine collection right is it a clean urinal with a lid is it a sterile calf and a sterile uh, specimen cup or is it a sterile specimen cup and urine collection container for the toilet or is it a styrofoam cup and wipes. Hmm. What do you guys think? Questions again, okay? Physician ordered a sterile urine specimen from the patient. Now you are the ones that gotta prepare what the MD is gonna need. So what do you get for the MD? What do you prepare them for, okay? Is it a clean urinal with a lid? Or is it a sterile calf kit and a sterile specimen cup? Or is it a sterile specimen cup and urine collection container for the toilet, or is it a sterile cup and wipes? Okay, you guys, the answer was in the question, right? <laughs> well, these four choices. The answer was in the question because the word you're looking at is sterile, right? So the first one, clean urinal with the, with the kit. No, he, he or she didn't say clean. Your doctor said, she said sterile. So it can't be clean, it's not gonna cut it, right? C was a sterile specimen cup and a urine collection kit for the toilet. Toilets are not sterile, so no. So no, no, the last one is a sterile cup and wipes. Of course not, right? So by, again, your confident deduction is going to be a sterile calf and a sterile specimen cup. Guys, even if you never knew what sterile calf was or whatever, right? In the question, it's already asking for sterile. So just go with that, right? Keep that, look for that same in the answer, right? Because the answer says a sterile calf kit and sterile uh, cup, right? Obviously, that goes together, right? That's how you do that, okay? Just really good deductive thinking. That's all you gotta do, okay? What blood component makes up over 50% of blood volume? What job, boys? No problem, guys. What blood component makes up over 50% of blood volume? Is it iron, red blood cells, platelets, or plasma? <clears> hmm. <throat> so you need to know what blood component makes up over 50% of blood volume. Is it iron, red blood cells, platelets, or plasma? Hmm. It's plasma, guys. Plasma. Okay, let's keep on going. A hematologist specializes in what specific body part? Hmm. Is it joints, lungs, blood or bones, right? So a hematologist specializes in what specific body part, right? Is it joints, lungs, blood or bones, okay? So you go back, right? What does hema mean, right? Hema, heme, right? Remember that from your school, right? Hema, blood. So a hematologist specializes in what specific body part. You guys see what I'm trying to show you? you portion of that question, right? You see hema, you see in there, you see the answers, you see blood in there. So you know they go together, they join together. That's all you gotta do, guys. Don't let this test scare you. You can do this, okay? I'm here to help you for that, okay? What is an example of a pneumotropic virus? Hmm. 
Big words, Jonesy. Yes, I know sometimes. Thank you. Okay, what is an example of a pneumotropic virus? Is it HIV, influenza, polio, or chickenpox? Hmm, that's tough, right? Is it HIV, influenza, polio, or chickenpox? Okay, again, you've seen these similarities again, right? What is an example of a pneumotropic virus? Even if you don't know what nothing in that sentence means except for pneumo, right? You know what pneumo means, is, right? Because the answer is influenza, influenza. Again, you see these kind of these combinations happening. These, these the, the questions are there and the answers are there and they're kind of coming together, right? You look at it, what's the other one with the, with the, um, with the physician with the sterile cups right with the sterile uh, uh calf right sterile and sterile go together you know i mean it, it's, it's, it's even with the blood you know i mean you guys have to pay attention right you just, just gotta pay attention because the hematologist studies blood right because hema and blood this test should not psych you out this much you guys because you can do this okay i have faith in you that's why i'm so excited when i talk to you all the time because i know you can do this all right okay we're performing a 12 lead ekg on a patient right the patient should be placed in what position right what position should a patient for ekg be placed in standing prone high fowler position or supine right EKG, what position are they in, right? Standing, prone, high, fowler position are supine, okay? This one should be easy for you, supine. So you go going through that test, the answer is supine. So you go going through your test, you see that question, boom, supine, you keep on going, okay? That's all you got to do, okay? For all you guys that su subscribe to this channel, I'm so happy. I got four so subscribers in one day. For me, it's a big deal. I'm a small channel, you know, but I'm so happy and I'm so thankful to you guys for not just looking, but also subscribing. It's free. It doesn't hurt anybody, right? If you like this channel, if you like this video, please hit like. I hate when they say like before I see the video because sometimes you might think, ah, man, job-wise, that video stinks, right? <laughs> then I gotta say, oh man, okay, I guess I don't get a like. But that's how it works sometimes in real life, you know? Also to you guys, you wanna see when my next video comes out, hit that like button for sure, uh, hit the uh, bell button for sure for more videos for sure. Comments are always welcome. I like to hear comments from you guys. You guys have been hitting me hard with the emails. So thank you very much for all these great video ideas, okay? You guys are doing so great. Hey? Good, right? Calibration, control samples, region control, and documentation are all examples of what? Lab test protocols, reference laboratory logs, quality control measures, or cytology testing. Kind of hard, I know, but here's the question again. Calibration control samples, reagent control, and documentation are all examples of lab test protocols, reference laboratory log, quality control measures, and cytology testing. What is that answer, right? Hmm, that's hard. Quality control measures, okay? And again, the way you know this, this is a kind of question that's designed to make sure you know exactly what you're talking about because honestly the lab test protocols came kind of close to that tell you the truth right but it's not the answer but it comes close another prime example where you have two close ones and two ridiculous ones okay but the two close ones were lab test protocols and also quality control measures so they're trying to make sure you know what you're talking about if you hit that question and you're not sure what do you do what does job wise say you do you go on you come back to it later okay in medicine, the abbreviation IM means what? Intravenous, intradermal, intramuscular, intermediary. So what does IM mean, right? Intravenous, intradermal, intramuscular, or intermediate. What could it be? Mm. You guys should know this already. I am is intramuscular. You know this already. We're not going to worry about that one because you guys have that one down. I know already, okay? Which of these methods is a method of blood collection? Okay? Remember, this is dino dinoxis, uh, sorry, <laughs> diagnostics. So here we go. Here's the possibles. 
Which of these is a method of blood collection? Subcutaneous puncture, capillary puncture, joint aspiration, or intramuscular puncture? Mm. Which of these is a method of blood collection? Subcutaneous puncture, capillary puncture, joint aspiration, intramuscular puncture. Which one is that? What? That's kind of close, right, guys? It's going to be capillary puncture, okay? And again, you got to know what capillary puncture is to understand the answer to that question. They're trying to trick you because he has, he has three punctures in here, right? You got the subcutaneous puncture and the intramuscular puncture. We know it's not joint aspiration. So intramuscular puncture, subcutaneous puncture, then we have capillary puncture. Just know what capillary puncture is, but also know to what sub-Q and also know to what intramuscular puncture is, okay? You guys will be fine. Don't let this thing sweat you. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. Keep watching this video. Watch it three or four times so you have it memorized. My videos are short for a reason. I see these MA videos sometimes to help you out. They're like 60 or 70 questions in one video. No one can possibly take all that in at one time. Mine are short, a little fun and goofy because I'm fun and goofy, but to get you ready for your test, right? I've got success, right? Today, 63 people so far have written to me, tell me thank you for helping with their test. So that's pretty good. I'm very humbled for that. So what is a centrifuge, right? A device for sterilizing surgical instruments, a device to separate components of blood samples, oh, a blood collection container, or a device to read data from specimens. Woo, all those crazy possible answers. Let's go again. What is a centrifuge, right? A device for sterilizing surgical instruments, a device to separate components of blood specimens, a blood collection container, a device to read data from specimens. What could that be? Mm. Mm. It is a device to separate components of blood specimens. Look at the first one they ask you, right? You see the question, right? What's a centrifuge? Okay. And the first thing they say to you is a device to sterilize surgical instruments. What does that do? What that question does, it weeds out those who didn't really study for the CCMA or the HMA because uh, because what happens is that a device for sterilizing instruments is not called a centrifuge. What's it called? Autoclave, right? So they're hoping, not hoping, they put that in there to make sure you understand your knowledge. They want to make sure you've been watching JobWise Jones videos <laughs> to prepare you for the test, right? That's really what they're doing. It's, it's, it's not a centrifuge. It's not a, it's, it, it, a centrifuge to separate components of blood specimens. Of course, it goes around and separates the blood out, of course, right? But look out for little landmines like that in those tests. They they do those little things to make sure you have your knowledge, right? That's why it's so important, okay? If that question sticks you, go by. Keep on going down and come back to it. And remember, you will remember that. You will know centrifuge from autoclave. Maybe you're so nervous that day, you're not thinking right, but you will get it together before you leave that testing room, okay? All right, guys. There we go. Okay. Which of these will cause artifact on an EKG monitor. Wow. Talking too loudly, heart palpitations, breathing deeply, or a seizure. So which of these four will cause artifact on an EKG monitor? Talking too loudly, heart palpitations, breathing deeply, or a seizure. Which of those would do that? What would do that, you think? It's a seizure. A seizure will cause some artifact. Now, you guys got to make sure you understand that that's not really a trick question as much as it is a knowledge question. They want you to see how you're deducting rational answers, right? Because you might think it might be a heart or, or somebody uh, uh, sneezing, talk too loud, whatever, but that's not really going to affect that, okay? A seizure would for sure, okay? So, so there we go. In this test, you guys are going to take, just take your time. Remember things I'm teaching you here. I'm trying to show you associations, you know. That's what I'm doing. I'm here for you guys, all right? This is what we're going to do. My methods work. You keep repeating these videos. You keep watching. You memorize them. They're small pieces for a reason. They're also in categories for a reason. This was diagnostics. I do this on purpose so you guys know what's going on, okay? All right, you guys. 
Thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Please subscribe and join this family. We're number three right now. On, oh, number three on YouTube. I'm so happy. We're way away from one and two because those guys do the life of a medical assistant. I don't have that. I give you the nitty gritty, the hard stuff, the tests, the test taking styles and taking over <laughs> and how to get into your schools and dealing with the school recruiter and how much you're going to pay. I even do stuff on stocks, how to invest your, your money you make as an MA, 401k stuff, you know, interview practice, you know, everything I have is for you. So check it out and thank you.